how that is. Don't say dairy cow, that's kind of obvious. Tiny is a two-year-old Jersey cow. She's one of six breeds of dairy cattle we have in the United States. Jerseys are known for being the smallest, but they have the highest cream content. So we use their milk for things like cheese, butter, and ice cream. The most popular breed you'll see are the black and white Holsteins. Those make up over 95% of our dairy cattle in the United States. And most dairy farmers do prefer to milk those over any other breed because they are the largest and they do make the most milk. And they average between 8 and 13 gallons of milk every single day. In order for these cows to make milk, they have to do several very important things. The first thing they're going to do is at the age of two, they are considered full grown, and that is when they will have their very first calf. Then they will have a calf every year to year and a half after the age of two to maintain their milk supply. If they do not give birth, they do not make milk, so that is very important. Now once she gives birth, she'll start making milk right away. This cow makes about six gallons of milk a day, which is much more than her baby can consume, and that's why we move the baby from them after they're born so they don't get too much or too little. And that's also why we have the extra milk to add into our diet to uh, be a good source of protein. These cows also have to eat and drink a lot to be able to make that milk. These cows will eat between 65 and 100 pounds of food a day. Her diet will consist of things like grass, hay, corn, uh, corn silage, soybeans, cottonseed. However, they can even eat things like peanut shells, potato chips, and chocolate bars. There are some dairy farmers who live near chocolate factories and they can buy the leftover broken pieces and add it into their feed as a protein source. Now, However, I'm this, not tell me that's where chocolate milk comes no, this does not all. mean they make chocolate oh, okay, milk. Okay, Sorry okay. to burst your bubble. Oh. All cows make white milk no matter where or what they eat and uh, what color they are too. So that doesn't have any, any association with the flavor of the milk. Along with eating all that food, they will drink about a bathtub full of water every single day. And that's because milk is about 87% water, so these cows need to consume a lot to be able to make that milk. Now even though these cows eat and drink a lot, they are very thin. You can see their ribs, hip bones, back bones. That is very normal. These cows are naturally made thin, but also because when they make milk, that's kind of like their exercise. They're burning off all their body fat, calories, and nutrients, and putting it into making milk. So as long as they are producing, they will not keep extra weight on their body. Now before we milk cows, we have to make sure our barn is clean, also our equipment. So we will run a sanitizer wash through all of our jars, pipelines, and uh, milking cloths. And lastly, we will milk or wash the cow. Excuse me. We'll wash her with a soapy solution on her udder. She has one udder, four parts. Each part is called a quarter, and each quarter contains milk. This solution instantly sanitizes the cow and also removes any dirt or germs that may be on her udder. We'll then take a clean paper towel and wipe the excess soap off. This gets her dry. It also starts to stimulate her milk letdown. If these cows are not clean before each milking or provided a safe and calm environment to milk in, they can hold up their milk and get very sick. So it's important we do this each time to clean the cow, but also to signal to her that we're going to milk her. And it's also important we're nice and quiet around her so she will feel comfortable in doing so. We do not milk cows by hand anymore because it takes too long and it's not a very clean method. So you're going to see this milking claw instead. It takes milk directly from the cow and puts it into the glass jar you see there without anything touching it. This way, your milk has never been touched by a human hand when you guys buy it at the grocery store, and that's how we keep everything so clean. This machine uses a gentle squeezing mechanism to squeeze the milk from the cow and send it to the jar you see there. Wow. It does not hurt her in any way, shape, or form. It just relieves her of a lot of weight and pressure she has to carry around. Now the milk is going to be very warm when it exits her body. Her body temperature is 101.5 degrees, so the milk is going to be over 90 degrees when it enters that jar. So once she's done, we're going to send the milk through this silver pipeline to our cooling tank over here to my right. That cooling tank will cool the milk to 36 degrees and give it a stir. Once it is cooled and stirred, we will have a semi-truck come pick that milk up and take it to a processing plant. At our processing plant, we will do three things. We will inspect each load of milk before it's ever taken off the truck. Once it passes that test, we will pasteurize it, meaning heating it up to kill any germs or bacteria. And lastly, we will homogenize it, which is stirring it to keep the cream from rising to the top. Then we can add flavorings to make our chocolate or strawberry milk. We can make ice cream, cheese, yogurt, cottage cheese, sour cream, butter, all the good things you guys like to enjoy. Now the milk in this jar is clean enough to drink. Most all dairy farmers and their families drink this milk before we ever send it to you and your family. And that's because we make sure our barn, our cows, and our equipment are kept very, very clean. However, we do go through pasteurization and homogenization to always ensure food safety and to also increase your
your shelf life of your milk. Milk like this will only last you about four days in your refrigerator, whereas pasteurized and homogenized milk can last you almost up to two weeks because it's been stirred and heated. Make sure everyone gets three servings of dairy a day. Milk has nine essential vitamins and nutrients for us that are good for our muscles, bones, teeth, eyes, hair, skin, and fingernails, and it even gives our body energy. So make sure you're grabbing your milk, cheese, ice cream, butter, yogurt, all those good things, and add it on to your foods or with your foods to make sure you get those nine essential vitamins and nutrients. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. We have free promotional items across the street. Make sure you grab those before you head on. Thank you for joining us and enjoy your afternoon at the fair. So I got questions, I got questions. Yes. Yes. You said this is one here that has a higher butter fat, so that's why they use it for cheese and, and ice cream, right? Yes. Okay, now, now is that going to be really, really a lot more butter fat or just a little bit more butter fat? Um, quite a bit more butter fat, yes. Oh, About cool. a percentage to a percentage and a half more than wow. other cream. Wow, so you guys like ice cream? You guys like ice cream She's and cheese? Already had ice cream for breakfast. You did for breakfast? Oh, that's fair food. All right. Did you say thank you to this cow over here? Did I say thank you to her? Because she's very sweet. She's tiny, but I'm not really tiny compared to you, right? Her name is Tiny. You want to meet me? I want to say hi to you too. Cool. Can you shake my hand?